It's no surprise then that one of its most celebrated benefits is an apparent reduction in feelings of anxiety and a boost in mood. That ashwagandha possesses the direct ability to reduce the stress hormone cortisol that it directly increases testosterone, which could potentially lead to greater strength and fitness. Understand what the key chemical structures are within the root, which endow ashwagandha with its medicinal properties. See, inside plants are an array of special compounds known as phytochemicals. Because plants can't move around to meet their needs, responding to and attacking disease molecules if their soil becomes contaminated. Some are designed to deter insects from eating them, as the plant can't exactly run away. And certain phytochemicals simply help the plant grow fast and strong. Every so often, these molecules can overlap with ones which activate pathways in our own bodies. In this way, what makes ashwagandha special is that it contains an unusually high number of phytochemicals. Worth special attention is a family of approximately 40 phytochemicals, which ashwagandha contains, they were a class of steroidal lactones, known as withanolids. Don't let the word steroid confuse you though. In our bodies, there are a bunch of naturally occurring steroid hormones, which do everything from suppressing inflammation to helping us heal from injury and build muscle. One of the most common claims regarding ashwagandha is that it helps to reduce levels of the stress steroid hormone cortisol, as well as the resultant feelings of anxiety and depression resulting in an overall improved feeling of well-being and a new positivity towards life. In 2008, a clinical trial was conducted to address exactly this question. They found 98 chronically stressed out but otherwise healthy participants and had participants complete a survey to measure the degree of their stress. The survey was based on a Bengali version of a modified Hamilton anxiety scale for stress and had participants rate symptoms of anxiety on a five-point scale. The placebo group, which would consume a pill without ashwagandha in it, one group, which would consume one daily dose of 125 milligrams of ashwagandha root powder, one group would consume 250 milligrams each day, and the last group would take 500 milligrams of the root powder each day. In the lowest dose group, by day 30, their average total score dropped by 39.5%, and by day 60, it had dropped 62.2%, compared to the placebo group, which saw no significant change at all. But 500 plus milligrams seems to be the optimal amount for maximum benefits. The researchers also measured biological changes. At the start of the study, they took baseline levels of several hormones, including cortisol, DHEAS, and C-reactive protein. Our cells create ATP within themselves. One of the main processes of creating these energy units is called the electron transport chain. One of the byproducts of the system are excess electrons, hence the name. Now, usually this isn't a problem. Through a series of oxidation reduction reactions, the electrons can be brought to an oxygen molecule, which is then combined with hydrogen to produce simple, harmless water. However, in anywhere from 0.1% to 2% of electrons passing through the chain, there is a glitch, where oxygen is instead prematurely and incompletely reduced, creating the superoxide radical, which is definitely not harmless. Superoxide is a type of free radical. Radicals can damage the systems inside your body. Free radicals can begin causing havoc, binding with chemicals they aren't meant to, reacting with harmless chemicals turning them into toxic ones, even causing DNA damage, which can lead to cell death. Because they originate in the mitochondria, that's often the place they damage the most. If this energy center is damaged, it can become less efficient at creating ATP, leading to the creation of even more free radicals. One of the biggest of these sources is ultraviolet rays from the sun. Our bodies have a complex antioxidant defense system, which is usually able to clear away these free radicals. Enzymes such as superoxide dimutase, catalase, and glutathione peroxidase all exist to neutralize free radicals. In addition, there are non-enzymatic defenses, vitamin C, vitamin E, zinc, and copper to name a few. However, sometimes, whether it's due to your diet, lifestyle, or simply genetics, 
these defenses can get worn down, leading to an overabundance of free radicals. This is both a major problem, but also a major opportunity for ashwagandha. Once I see, not only do free radicals destroy DNA and cause cell death, but they also trigger immune and stress responses, both of which lead to the key which ties this all together, the inflammatory response. If your antioxidant defense systems are worn down, levels of free radicals can easily get out of hand. These free radical levels trigger the immune response. And what comes with the immune response? The inflammatory response. The brain is especially susceptible to this inflammation because it has one of the highest mass-specific oxygen consumption rates in the body. So even the smallest imbalance in antioxidant defense mechanisms can be damaging to brain cells. Brain regions in the limbic system both play a large role in controlling symptoms of depression and anxiety, and also seem to be strongly impacted by the damaging effects of free radicals. More and more researchers are beginning to make the connection that continual, low-grade systemic inflammation in the brain, termed neuroinflammation, is deeply involved in the pathophysiology of feelings of depression and anxiety. One piece of evidence for this link is in levels of C-reactive protein. Doctors actually use elevated levels of C-reactive protein as an indicator of an inflammatory condition. After 60 days consuming ashwagandha, their C-reactive protein levels were down by about a third across the different dosage groups. As I said, stress and inflammation are closely linked, so much so that some of the same neuropeptides control both. An example of which is the nuclear factor KB pathway, which, when activated, leads to both inflammation and the release of various stress hormones. Axis. Ashwagandha has been shown in studies to be able to disrupt this NFKB pathway. This explains why the clinical trial which saw reductions in C-reactive protein also logged reductions in the levels of the stress hormone cortisol. So it seems that ashwagandha can decrease many of the secondary symptoms of stress. Studies have shown decreases in blood pressure and heart rate, as well as increases in social functioning and motivation. Since oxidative stress is also a component of aging, and many degenerative diseases like arthritis and Parkinson's, the traditional beliefs about improving life expectancy could have some actual merit. While it's beyond the scope of this video, I should also mention there has even been study into the cancer-fighting abilities of some of the active chemicals in ashwagandha. Now there's one major category which we haven't touched on yet. These would be the claims regarding boosts in testosterone, muscle size, strength, and male fertility. Well, luckily for us, there is also research on these topics. In 2015, a study was published in the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. The idea was to take 57 young men with little training experience and divide them into two groups. Subjects in the treatment group consumed 300 milligrams of ashwagandha root extract twice daily, while the control group consumed starch placebos, then performed the same resistance training program for eight weeks they tested for changes in one rep max strength, as well as measured for muscle size and testosterone level changes. Now, if you've watched my channel for a little bit, you know I'm always skeptical of the ability of a herb to significantly affect muscular development, which is why I was surprised with the results. While the placebo group packed on an average of 26.4 kilograms onto their bench press over the two months, the group consuming ashwagandha added an average of 46 kilograms. A similar difference was also seen on the leg extension. Additionally, the ashwagandha group also gained a bit more muscle size than the placebo group did. Now it's well known that new lifters will usually make the fastest gains in strength, but regardless, these numbers really caught my interest. The authors of the study put forth several explanations for the results. See, the ability to hit a one rep max lift can be broken into three components. The size of the muscles doing the lift, their ability to produce energy, and the central nervous system's ability to recruit the muscles and coordinate them to generate the required force. That ashwagandha consumption can help with brain function through reductions in inflammation. It is reasonable to hypothesize that this might have a carryover benefit to the rest of the CNS as well. Also, from an energy production standpoint, we know that the antioxidant properties of the herb 
can have beneficial effects on mitochondrial energy levels and functioning. But the most interesting element by far is muscle size. One is that the boost in testosterone levels led to greater muscle growth. While the increase was statistically significant and impressive for a herb, testosterone levels still remained within natural levels. While the placebo group's serum testosterone levels increased to about 695 nanograms per deciliter, the treatment group's average level was 725. In my opinion, that isn't enough alone to explain such a large discrepancy in gains. 1. The ability of ashwagandha to lower cortisol levels is known to be causative in muscle breakdown. Also, a recently conducted population-based study found that higher levels of IL-6 and CRP increase the risk of muscle strength loss. Ashwagandha, as you may remember, both lowers CRP and suppresses the NFKB pathway, which is what produces IL-6. This means, while ashwagandha is promoting growth pathways, it's also reducing the activation of pathways which break down muscle. In terms of fertility benefits, studies on infertile men have found improvements in sperm health and quality. This coincides with both reductions in markers of oxidative stress in testicles and improvements in reproductive hormone levels. I had to read through countless papers to get to this understanding, but now you won't have to. One thing I should mention, if you're interested in picking some up, make sure you buy from a reputable brand. Some brands will dilute the root powder with material from other parts of the plant. The most common one you'll see is called KSM-66. Developed by a lab in India, 